Hello, you're watching New Vision TV. I am Ruth Nasege. Now, there is a tendency to build a Uganda's independent struggle just because it not involve overspilling of blood through the armed struggle. As Uganda prepares to celebrate 55 years of independence, New Vision TV outlines the highlights of the determined struggle by two generations of courageous Ugandan nationalists that spanned for four decades, culminating into the nation's independence in October 1962. When the colonialists completely took over the consolidated territory of Uganda, they drew the 1900 agreement with Buganda, which effectively became the country's first constitution. Because it did not favor the masses, especially in matters of land ownership, agitation for independence started as early as two decades later in the 1920s. It was led by the clan leaders called Bataka, who managed to push some concessions regarding security of land tenure. Because the 1900 agreement was signed between the British and the collaborators who had betrayed Kabaka Mwanga to facilitate the imposition of colonial rule, the Bataka were also effectively against the new Kabaka's establishment. Later, the struggle was joined by enlightened Boganda like Ignatius Musazi, who formed cooperative societies for the people's economic emancipation. They started securing better prices for the farmers' cash crops like cotton, coffee and tea to reduce the exploitation of whites and Indians. The base of the cooperatives was established in Katwe, the African township. The end of the Second World War in 1945 energized the nationalists as returning veterans explained to the people that the white people were not special and can also be beaten and defeated. Some veterans went ahead to study for degrees. This included Benedicto Chiwanuka, who studied law, and Jolly Joe Chiwanuka. Others who had not been to war but got very fine education locally and abroad included Abu Mayanja, John Karekezi, the father of IGP Kale Kaihura, and Milton Obote. But probably the most effective anti-colonial fighter was Augustine Kamia, who was based in Chibuye, much in the area. The not-so-highly-educated mobilizer was called Kamiya Mubitoke because of the banana plantation at his home base and he led trade boycotts that brought the economy to its knees. In 1952, the turning point started with the exiling of the Kabaka of Buganda, Sir Edward Mutesa. The British governor, Andrew Cohen, had secured clearance from London to proceed and arrange the East African Federation. But Mutesa was opposed to it as the position of Buganda in the bigger East Africa was not clear. Besides, hasty federations enforced elsewhere had failed. Mutesa flatly rejected the federation and was deposed by the governor. With Mutesa deposed as king and exiled in Britain, the agitation for independence took a higher level. The Ruchiko delegation that flew to London defeated the British establishment in their own turf through legal, political, diplomatic and press battles. When the British relented and negotiations for the return of the Kabaka got underway, the 1900 constitution was repealed and replaced by the Protectorate Namirembe Agreement of 1955. This effectively became the new constitution which was updated for the independence. Around that time, strong political parties developed, led by the nationalists mentioned above, like Musazi, Chiwanuka. But there was a lot of religious identity in the parties, and splits started to tear them down. Finally, the Uganda People's Congress of Milton Obote formed an alliance with the purely sectarian Kawakayeka and defeated Ben Chiwanuka's Democratic Party. At independence, power was thus handed to those who may have struggled less but were smarter than those who struggled more. 